Mark Harris. I'm a high school biology teacher from Layton, Utah. I'm presently on the NOAA ship, the David Star Jordan. I'm, a, I'm involved with a research project called the Star 2006 Stanella Dolphin Abundance Research Project. And I, I'm involved in the first leg from San Diego to Mazalan, and then I get off, and then there's five other legs after that. I'm involved with the Armada Project. The Armada Research Project is funded by the National Science Foundation and administered by the University of Rhode Island Graduate School of Oceanography. It's a mentoring and research experience for teachers. Let me tell you, without any qualifications, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'm enjoying every minute of it, and let me tell you about what I do during a typical day. I wake up at 4.30 a.m. to help put the CTD capsule into the water. The CTD stands for Conductivity, Temperature, and Density of the Ocean. Candace Hall, a native from Cape Town, South Africa, is the ship's oceanographer. The CTD capsule is lowered to 1,000 meters and is slowly brought to the surface, sampling water at various depths. Check out these styrofoam cups that we attach to the capsule. It is amazing the pre pressure that is exerted at 1,000 meters. After breakfast, I head up to the flying bridge, the highest point of the ship. This is where three mammal observers and one sea bird observer are positioned from sunrise until sundown. Sightings of any marine mammal are noted along with other seabird sightings. Identification is the next step and all work together to target the school of dolph dolphins and each observer makes his or her estimate. The numbers are never shared which ensures consistency. The call to biopsy the various dolphins and whale populations is made by the cruise leader Bob Pittman. The biopsy samples are taken with a hollow tipped arrow shot from a crossbow. There are two ways of obtaining the biopsies. The first, shooting from the bow of the ship. A shooter positions himself or herself on the bow and gets the sample as the dolphin's bow ride. For the more elusive dolphins, the small boat is deployed and begins chase until a dolphin comes up for air and the shot is delivered. Not a bad day at the office for these people. Then I work my way down to the aft deck. This is the back of the ship. When the small boat goes into the water, I usually go on with Lindsay Peavy, a dedicated turtle biologist. Our mission is to capture any sea turtle found in the open ocean. Once we spot the turtle, the boat slowly comes up from behind, and with lightning speed, someone, even myself, jumps in and grabs the turtle. One hand behind the neck, the other on the bottom of the cell. You must point the turtle up or you are in for a long ride down. We then bring the turtle on board. Remember, some of these turtles weigh over 100 pounds, so this is not an easy task. Once on board, they are taken back to the ship for weighing, blood and skin samples, and tagging. Each turtle takes around 20 minutes to process, and then is released unharmed back into the ocean. The next job is a self-appointed job. I love to fish, and checking the long lines is something I really enjoy. The crew will tow a line about 100 feet with a lure attached. The fish that we have caught so far are yellowfin tuna, wahoo, and mahi. We had an extremely productive day when we cruised by the Aleos Islands. Wahoo was the main catch. I believe we caught five 40-pound fish. We then processed the fish taken. Bob Olson from the Southwest Fisher Fisheries Lab in San Diego uses the stomach, liver, and muscle from each fish caught. I get to gut the fish, take the samples, bag them, and record the latitude and longitude, the species, male or female, and the time of the catch. This data is used to determine what and where these fish are feeding on. Sundown is the time of day to go out on the flying bridge. The observer's day is over and things begin to wrap up. As the sun sets over the horizon, it's hard to imagine how beautiful the colors are when you are at sea. Everyone always watches for the green flash. This happens when the sun disappears into the ocean. This is almost a magical experience. I then get ready to employ the CTD capsule one hour after sundown. 
as soon as the capsule is in the water, night is upon us and the ship's lights are turned on. This attracts many interesting sea creatures. Bob Pittman and various other net fishermen are busy capturing flying fish, little fish, and some squid. My job is to help Ileana Ruiz Cooley, a graduate student from New Mexico State University, collect squid samples. One of the night stops, we were able to catch 13 40 pound Humboldt squid. These squid live very deep in the ocean and come up to surface and, and feed at night. I caught two that night. I was reeling my squid in and could not figure out why it was so heavy. When the squid surfaced, I had two squid attached. Most nights, I'm able to catch a few small squid. The stomachs are extracted along with some tissue for analysis. I was amazed at how much squid will fight when hooked before you bring them aboard. They like to squeeze their mantle and squirt water right at you. Amazing animals, amazing time. Well, the CTD is loaded back onto the ship, and I look at my watch and it's 10 p.m. The best thing about this time is I get to do the same thing in about six more hours. Well, Rufus and I are going to say goodbye. Rufus is the trigger fish that I caught off of Le uh, Leo's Islands while we were bottom fishing. I actually got to catch him and name him. Hopefully he'll make it back to the Scripps Institute in four months when, they, uh, when the ship returns to San Diego. I wish everybody could have an experience of this. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity.